Hello, this is Tom, and in this video I'll be discussing the program format of the CNC Late program we wrote for Exercise 1. If you haven't had a chance to write the program, click on the link right here on the right side of the screen and watch the video where I'll give you all the information necessary to handwrite a CNC Late program that will produce the part right here on the screen. So if you're ready, let's take a look at the program. Alright, so before we go into the program, I want to take a quick look at the print that we used for our program. Uh, we had 50 thousands to face off, so we're going to take 20 thousands passes, leaving 5 thousands for a finish pass. Then we're going to rough the OD, taking 100 thousands per pass off the OD, leaving 30 thousands for a finish pass. Then we're going to finish the face, finish the OD. Then we come back and groove this thread relief, and then we're going to finish with threading the 3H24 thread. Alright, so let's take a close look at the program here. We're going to always start off with a percent sign. Most machines would require one at the beginning and then one at the end. We'll call that a tape start character, and that is simply for transferring programs into your control. Alright, then we start off with 0001. That's the program number and always give your program a name. Now this portion of the program right here will show up in your machine program directory so make sure that that identifies your program clearly. Alright on the next line I always like to put my initials and the date that I wrote the program. Then give as much information about the program as possible. For this program we're going to be using inch and three quarter diameter stock we're going to set Z0 3 inches in front of the jaws and then we call tool 1, tool 2, tool 4 and tool 5. So give each one of them a brief description so months later when you call up this program you can see when it was written, what material to use, where to set Z0 and what tools are being used. Alright so then we go on to the program. N100 now I've put all these comments here on the right side. Now I don't recommend you do that, that's a lot of work. I did this simply for clarity for this video. So the left side of the program is what we're concerned with. Alright, the operation description, we're going to rough the face. The very first line is our safety line. Then we're going to home out the x-axis and home out the z-axis. Then we're going to make a tool change. We're going to call tool 1 with offset 1. Then we're going to turn on the spindle with a G97S2000. That is a fixed RPM until we wrap it into position. So we're going to wrap it to G54, Z50 thousandths in front of the part. We're removing 50 thousandths off the face. So that is where we're going to wrap it to. Then we're going to wrap it to X, 1 inch 850. And on that approach, we're going to turn on the coolant with an M8. Then we're going to set the spindle speed limit to 3000 RPM. The G50 sets the limit. And the G96 sets the constant service speed to 400 service feet per minute. All right, then we have the first line of the G72 can cycle. We're going to take 20 thousandths per pass, so that's the W, and the R is the retract distance. Then the second line of the G72 is starts with a P11Q12. U0 means we're not leaving anything in X. W, 5 thousandths, mean we're going to leave 5 thousandths for a finish pass. And of course, F6 thousandths is 6 thousandths per revolution feed rate. All right, then... The N11 refers to P11, and the very first line is G0Z0. That means that is the end point of this can cycle. Then we're going to do a G1X minus 60 thousandths. That is the end point of the geometry that we're going to be facing. And that puts the tip of the tool with 30 thousandths radius right on center of the part. Then N12 refers to Q12, that is the end of the geometry, that is followed by a Z05, so 50 thousandths, and that is our start point. So basically this can cycle took off 50 thousandths in 20 thousandths increments, leaving 5 thousandths stock. And then we wrap it back up to X1 inch 850. Alright, so we're going to scroll down and we're going to 
go right into the rough OD G71 can cycle. So first of all we're going to G0 X1 inch 750. That is the diameter we're going to wrap it to. Then we're going to wrap it to Z50 thousands in front of the part and that is where we're going to start the G71 can cycle. All right, the U is the 50 thousandths depth of cut. So that's going to take 100 thousandths off the diameter with each pass. The R 50 thousandths is the retract at the end of each pass. And then we'll go on to the second line, which is the G71 P21 Q22. And we have learned that the P21 and Q22 represent the N21 and N22 where the geometry is located for this roughing operation. All right, the U30 means we're going to leave 30 thousandths in X for a finish pass and the W10 thousandths means we're going to leave 10 thousandths on each face for a finish pass. And then the F.01 is the feed rate used for this scan cycle. All right, so starting at N21, G0, G42. Remember the G42 is the cutter compensation line right we're going to be using because we're writing the code as if we have a sharp corner. So the smallest diameter we're going to be turning is X.375. Then we move on to G1, Z0. Then we go on to Z minus 750. Then we turn to X630 thousandths. We do a counterclockwise arc to the diameter of X.750 Z minus 810 with a radius of 60 thousandths. Then we're going to do a linear move to Z minus 1 inch 100. Then a clockwise arc to X 1 inch 050 Z minus 1 inch 250 with a radius of 150 thousandths. Then we're going to make a straight line move to X 1 inch 99 thousandths, then up to X 1 inch 500, Z minus 1 inch 998. And then I'm going to turn to Z minus 2 inches 650, which is 150 thousandths past the end of the part. I know that the print only showed 2 inches 500, but I want to just clear off just a little bit past the end of the part in case I want to part it off right there. All right, then we come to N22. That's where we cancel our cutter compensation with a G40 and a X1 inch 750 is the start diameter of this can cycle. Then we're going to wrap it to G0, Z50 thousandths in front of the part, and we're going to go home out the axis, turn the coolant off, turn the spindle off and we have M1 for an optional stop. So that takes care of the G71 can cycle. All right, so then we move on and we go on to making a tool change to do the finish face and finish OD. So we start off with N200, which is a sequence number for tool number two. Then we're gonna finish the face. We got our safety line. We home out our X, we home out our C, and then we'd make a tool change. We call tool number two with offset two. Then we turn on the spindle with fixed spindle speed of 2000 RPM, and we wrap it to Z 50 thousandths. Then we wrap it to X one inch 850, and on that line we turn on the coolant. Then we limit our spindle speed to 3000 RPM, and we set our constant service footage to S 400. Now here the G70 is looking at the geometry between P11 and Q12, which is N11 and N12, which is the facing operation. And if we scroll back up, you can see it's looking at this portion of the code and it's now going to do a finish pass at that location using that geometry. Then once it's done finishing the face, it wraps back up to X1 inch 850 and we do the same thing we do G70 P21 Q22 and that looks at the geometry between N21 and N22 and finishes all this geometry. Now the G42 and G40 is taken care of in this G71 can cycle and that is what the G70 will pick up. 
so there's no need to put a G42 or a G40 in this location. Alright, at that point the face and the OD will be finished with tool number 2. We wrap it back up to X1 inch 850, home out the X axis, turn off the coolant, turn off the spindle, and we're back to an optional stop. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is do a thread relief. So we're going to make a tool change. So we have our sequence number of N400. We put a comment, a thread relief. And again, we start with the safety line. We home out our X axis. We home out our Z axis. And then we make a tool change in a safe position. Here again, we change to tool 4. We bring in offset 4. We turn on the spindle to 2000 RPM. And we're not going to be using a constant service speed for this operation, so G97S2000 will be the fixed RPM for this operation. We're going to wrap it to G0, G54, Z minus 0.750. That's where our groove is located. We wrap it to a clearance plane of X850 thousandths. We turn the coolant on right there. And we're going to feed all the way down to the finished diameter of that groove to X310,000 with a feed rate of 2 thousandths per revolution. Then we wrap it back up to X850,000 clearance plane and then we home out our X, turn off our coolant, turn off our spindle and we're back to an optional stop. And then we move on to our last operation which is the threading operation. Alright, so the first thing you may notice is that each operation starts off with a sequence number, a comment, and then a safety line. We home out X and we home out Z before we make a tool change. Now each operation I start out that way and I do that on purpose so that each operation is actually a mini program in itself. So because there's going to be times where you're going to need to start in the middle of the program and this way you only have to put your cursor at N500 or N400 or N200 and start from there it'll read in all the safety lines and all the safe moves before making a tool change turning on the spindle and wrapping into position alright so let's start from the top of course the N500 with our comment for threading uh, we got the safety line home out X home out Z Call up tool 5 with offset 5. And we're going to turn the spindle on to a fixed RPM of 1500 RPM. And we're going to wrap it into position 200 thousandths in the front of the part. And remember the 200 thousandths gives the machine enough room to synchronize both the spindle and the z-axis motion before getting into the threads. Then we wrap it to X575, 100 thousandths away from the part. We turn our coolant on and we go right into the G76 can cycle. Alright, so the P02 stands for the amount of spring passes we're going to take. The second set of zeros means that we're going to pull out at the end of the thread straight out. Now if you was to put a 01 in there, then the tool will start to exit the part at an angle of one thread before it gets to the end of the thread. So if you put a 2, it'll start pulling out two threads before the end. So the higher that number, the further away from the end will it start pulling out and kind of putting a taper at the end of that thread. All right, the 30 at the end is the end feed angle. And there's a couple of different options. You can leave that 0. You can make that a 29. But for this operation, we're going to use 30 degrees. All right, then the Q10 is the depth per pass, which is going to be one thousandths or two thousandths on the diameter. Again, the machine does not want a decimal, so we're going to move the decimal four places to the right, and we come up with ten. Then the R is the depth of the last pass. We move the decimal to the right four places, and we come up with R10. All right, then the second G76 line starts with the X, which is the minor diameter of the thread. The Z is the end point of the thread, and the P value is 225, which represents 22 and a half thousandths, which is the depth of the thread per side, so radially. Q20 is the depth of the very first pass that it takes, and the feed rate is 0 0.0416, which is the distance between threads. 
All right, that is all the information that you need to produce the thread. Then once you're done with that, we just home out in X, turn off the coolant, turn off the spindle, and an M30 is the end of the program and rewinds it back to the beginning. And don't forget to put your percent sign at the bottom, which is your tape end character. All right, so at this point, the program is ready to be loaded into the CNC control to machine the shape. Well, I hope this uh, exercise was helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.